Y'all ready to go outside and look at the baby goats? Yeah. The new baby? Yeah. You ready to go outside? So I was just sitting and reading a little poetry in the afternoon sunlight with my trusty sidekick, Baby. It's a good thing for me to pet the Baby dog. Looks like freezing temperatures are coming for us tonight. And they might not. There's always a chance that they that they won't whenever the forecast is really close. There's always a little chance that the actuality of what happens at your house is different than what's forecasted. But just to be safe, I'm gonna bring everything in, button up the greenhouse so I don't have to worry about losing any of my plants. Hey Ben. Yeah, you can come in. All the plants I'm leaving out front are frost hardy. It's not gonna get that cold and they'll be able to withstand a little freezing. What do you think? Good. Good. Okay, let me see that. So a lot of you ask me what I fertilize my seedlings with. And I actually don't like super actively fertilize seedlings because I plant seedlings in potting soil. So they have a certain measure of uh, nutrients already but if you're planting and potting mix you will need to add some sort of fertilizer and what I will usually use if I do something usually it's when my seedlings are a little bigger um, is just some sort of liquid plant food uh, typically something that is made for vegetables like this is a fox farm like liquid plant food and I mean you literally use like half a teaspoon in a gallon of water it's very very diluted and then uh, another one I really like is Neptune's Harvest they make really good organic fertilizer and I also like to use this product called Super Th Thrive it is not certified so if you are trying to grow like like purely organic this is not however I've done enough research on it that I feel good about it being like natural enough it's not synthetic and it is more like a vitamin supplement and it has some sea kelp in it and this is also just like a cap full in a gallon of water and you water the plants with it and I like this as well I think some of these plants need water underneath They've been going through it with it being warm. You want to help me water them? Yeah. Dum, dum, dum. Okay, let me show you what to do, okay? Okay. So they have all these bottom trays. I'm scared of that thing. You're scared of this thing? Mm-hmm. That's better. <laughs> all right, so all you have to do is pick up one of the pots and water in the hole until the water fills it up. So just water in the hole and just hold it there. It's gonna take a little while with it turned down that much. And I use these bootstrap farmer trays um, and they're in these like sling trays that hold the cups with the bottom water trays underneath. When I start noticing the top of my soil is getting dry, I can be pretty sure that these are dry and they are almost. There's a tiny bit of water in them. And uh, then I go ahead and fill them back up which of course is only gonna be to the bottom of these pots. I feel mostly good about the way my seedlings are progressing. Well done, Ben. <laughs> You'll notice as your seedlings grow that they're gonna need more water the bigger that they get. They're gonna go through it faster. So when they were really small, you might've only had to really add water every few days. But as they get really big, you'll notice that they're drying that soil out a lot faster, which makes sense. They're bigger and they need more water. You know, I know that sometimes I point out simple stuff oh. like that, and am I standing on the hose and making it stop, or did you turn it off? Here, how about these right here, look. Can you, uh. reach, can you reach them? Do you need me to set this, do you need me to set this bench down so you can reach? Yeah. There you go. And I know that that seems obvious to some of you, but Honestly, even the best people benefit from repetition, even the smartest and even the ones that already know that, already know things. It's beneficial to have repetition. It helps you retain facts. But also, um, 
you know, we grow as a whole whenever there are people who are willing to explain simple things without condemnation. And I would guess that there are more people who talk themselves out of explaining simple things because they think, ah, oh, that's dumb, nobody needs to, to know that. I, I'm guessing there are more of those people than there are the people who get annoyed by hearing simple things explained. Just a thought. That's his own water now. That guy? Well, you wanna know how it works? That guy's name's Jeffrey, you name everything Jeffrey. Look, if this guy has water, that means this guy has water because that tray fills up and you see it in one of the holes, that means it's in all of the holes. It's cool, huh? You in this one? Oh, yes. Yeah. You ready? Yeah! Go ahead and let's close that up. So it's safe from the freeze. Here, hold on, hold on. It's, it's open from the inside. I'm going to close this one. There we go. There we go. We got this covered. Hey, you don't have boots on. Go back to the front and I'll meet you there. We got this covered. This is that end of the bed where there's such a bad nut grass uh, infestation, I guess you could call it. And I think that just having this plastic down for the next few weeks should help with this. And then probably after that, I'll lay cardboard out and soak it really good and then cut some holes in it. And I'll probably plant something like squash or maybe some melons and let them grow along the bed instead of trellising them. Basically like something where I can plant a few plants and cover a big space. And that way I don't have to cut as many holes in the cardboard. And hopefully that will help with that spot down there. Okay. So I know I showed these radishes in the last vlog, but I think how fast radishes grow in good soil during this time of year is literally just mind boggling. Like they are, they're seriously almost doubling every 48 hours or so. It's crazy. Very, very cool. Hey, do you want a strawberry? Thank you. Hey, cheers. Oh, you already had yours. <laughs> Guys, when these roses start blossoming, I'm just gonna be so happy. It's gonna be so amazing. Box there so I can reach. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, here comes the babies. Oh, where's Pearl? Oh. Where's Pearl, Pearl? She might be over here. So today is officially the first day. <laughs> <laughs> the first day of the season that I had to call the lawn care service in. Hey, no slacking off out here. Oh, Ben, did you just see little Verity go down the slide? Hey, Miriam. Hey, Miriam. Are you playing on the playground, little girl? Are you playing on the playground? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to poke your eye. So the grass in the backyard, or really rather the weeds, the clover and slide. such, it's getting kind of high. So we let the goaties in here today to eat it down for a little bit. Goat kids are actually fun in the backyard because they play on the playground equipment. Be careful. Care oh, big boy. Pearl is seriously so cute. We had a little happening today. I'll come in slowly. Come on. No bear. Okay, she's wild. Be careful. Yeah, that's the afterbirth. We need to come clean that up. Yeah, I'll grab some something to get it with. Hey, girly, can we see him? Can we show him off? Oh, Ruthie. She's a wild one. So, Ruth had the largest buckling, the largest kid that we have ever had born on our farm. Oh, he's real cute. Got the spot on his So Ruth is like one of the reasons why we now handle our goat kids so much. Um, so she was damn raised, she was born on our farm and damn raised and we really didn't handle a lot. She had a real attentive mom who took good care of her and we just didn't handle her very much. And and she's just she's just kind of wild because of it. Now, having kids, we usually calm them down. And um, I'm gonna just start putting her on the stand and milking her tomorrow. Uh, she's feeding him today. And so we'll, we'll probably wait until tomorrow to put her on the stand. And um, that will calm her down a lot. It's, it'll be a handful, but we're gonna do it. And she's actually one that's on our list to rehome. And this little buckling will go with her. Um, I, w I won't be keeping him, but man, he is really neat looking. He is extremely cute. He's kind of like cream white, and he has white splotches and a black stripe down his back, and these little black freckle spots all over all over him. What'd you say? 
It's like he has a black pimple on the side of his cheek. <laughs> like a black pimple, kind of like that. It's really cute. He's a really cute boy. So today she was having him. I actually got a little bit of footage, which I will go ahead and plug in here. Okay guys, so I'm out by the goat barn right now. I'm actually filming this on my phone. I'm sorry, bottle babies, they don't understand boundaries. Um, and I'm doing, I've, I've got my phone because I don't want to bring my big camera out and scare Ruth because she's not been super handled. She's my least handled goat. And so I'm kind of keeping my distance and keeping an eye on things, but I wanted to get a little footage to share with y'all. Uh, so I figured I would get some phone footage. Oh my goodness, look at these guys. Quiet. See its tongue out. That's its tongue. Oh. It's magical. It's magical. I love it. It was pretty intense, and at some point, I just stopped trying to film anything with my phone because it became really evident that. Uh, she was struggling. Now, I think she would have got him out because he is, he was positioned well, but it was wearing her out. And this goat, which it does not like to be handled and never like comes willingly. Like she's, her mom is Nestle. Like her mom is one that's like always in my back pocket, lays her head on my lap. Uh, but Ruth just hasn't been handled much. But she let me uh, just help her a little bit today, kind of get his head out because uh, she couldn't get past his brow. And he's big. He's almost as big as Mac and Mercy, and he's he's brand new. I'm not gonna try to pick him up right now because she's obviously not really feeling that. And uh, so you guys will have to catch him on a later vlog and get a better look at him once she feels a little more settled. She will settle down. I'll probably handle him some tomorrow after I get her on the stand and milk her a little bit. We'll work on that so that he doesn't end up as wild as she is. And if you might be wondering like, okay, if you end up letting a doling or a doe get wild like that, have you ruined them? And absolutely not. Now, I don't, it's not ideal because like today when she was in labor, like I let her labor in the open barn instead of locking her up because I knew it would freak her out. I kept my distance and watched from the other side of the door. And when I finally did intervene a little bit, I could tell that it freaked her out, but she was desperate enough to let me. But the thing with a wild goat is they're just not fun to handle. You still got to trim their hooves. You still got to give them medicine when necessary. Copper and all that stuff. And when they're wild, it's just that much harder. And she has horns. But Anna, the La Mancha that I got from my cousin Amy, she was a damn raised wild little doe until she had her first kids. Uh, Mayhem, my my sweet, sweet girl who just loves me, my little nanny goat that is the midwife to everybody else. She was wild when I got her. She would not let me anywhere near her. So it can be brought back around. It's just better avoided if possible by handling from when they're young. Now bottle babies, like these guys, they'll be in our back pocket until the end of time. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's following you now. Oh, you're gonna let them get a closer look at Pearl? Oh, that is a real close look. She is so cute, isn't she? Hi. <laughs> She's the cutest. Okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs> They're following you. Oh, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get pet. <laughs> 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 He's so cute. You gotta turn around. Jump off. Is Max still your best goat friend? <laughs> My BF goat. <laughs> your BF goat. <laughs> He's your BGF. Your best goat forever. My best goat forever. <laughs> so with Ruth kidding today, we've started um, we started letting our goats go to new homes, the ones that were downsizing, uh, getting ready to like really cut down our herd and or we started really cutting down our herd. And with Ruth kidding today, that was the last kidding of the season. So we've moved past that. And I think it's safe to say that that's probably the last kidding 
that we'll have to that scale in the foreseeable future. We may get to the point in the future where we have a whole bunch of goats, but because I don't ever really want to do anything but for home dairy purposes, I think I will probably in the future keep my herd under 10 and then move towards getting a cow. Pearl really wants to hang, but I think the rocks scare her a little bit. Mom, because you're my best Mac forever. Your best Mac forever. Hey, I'm gonna go back to the high tunnel. You wanna come? Mm -hmm. Jump. Oh, careful, that fence is hot. Look at those chickens turning in the compost. Just scratching around in it. I'm getting it ready for my flowers. Good job, girls. Keep up the good work. Hey, pretty girls. Hi. Hey, pretty Rodette. <laughs> Rodette is pretty, isn't she? Yeah. You gonna open it? <gasps> That's not good. Huh, that must have caught the wind and pulled that off. Look at this place. It is looking ready. Hey, Toby, what's up, man? So the soil is amended in the high tunnel. Oh, it looks so good in here, like a blank slate, ready to plant. Uh, now the goal is to keep it good and watered and moist. So we're really trying to rehydrate those lower levels of the soil by keeping this top, top measure uh, hydrated. It is going to freeze maybe I'm gonna get really close to freezing over the next two nights so I'm just kind of keeping an eye out in here now next week our high is like 80 which is warm I mean to go from freezing nights to that and all next week the lows are like well above freezing and so I think what I may do is wait after these couple of cold nights and I'm, I may move some of my determinate tomatoes out here. It's a little bit of a risk, but I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna go ahead and take it. So the determinate tomatoes that I'm planting are like Oregon Spring and Oregon Star. They're all pretty basic red uh, tomatoes, but they're all varieties that are meant to be tolerant of cooler soil. So they're for planting early in the season. So they're developed in obviously Oregon, so they're meant to grow in conditions where they can tolerate cooler soil earlier in the year. And they come to fruition quickly. And my thought is, is if I can go ahead and plant some of those out here, I might not plant all of them, but if I plant like a bed or two of those, then I might be in tomato sooner. I can close up the greenhouse if I need to, and I have a couple of rows of frost fabric. So if by chance we get another late freeze that I feel like it's gonna get cold enough to actually freeze in the closed up high tunnel, I could throw a layer on them and keep them through a cold night. And my last frost date is estimated for the middle of April. So I am taking a tiny bit of a risk there. I mean, it's just a couple weeks early, but I have the materials on hand if it looks like there's danger. It's still a risk, but if it pays off, I'll have tomatoes sooner. So if you are watching this video in three months, if you're watching it in the summer, make sure you leave a comment and say, hey Jess, come back and look. Because this space will be just completely uh, inconceivable in a few months, be so full of life. Uh, yeah, you could eat that. It's, it's actually cauliflower, but you could eat the leaves. It's kind of like kale or cabbage. When am I gonna plant some banana peppers? When it gets a little warmer. Beautiful space. Take one big chunk. You're taking a big chunk. Benjamin, this is my happy place. Did you know? Mm. Yeah. No. no. You like those cauliflower leaves? Oh. <laughs> it's pretty good, huh? It sounds like a hmm. Benjamin, I think you're part dinosaur. Or maybe you're part goat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they are getting that lawn cleaned up. <laughs> Miriam. She's like, I have no interest in you while there's grass to eat. We actually do still mow our backyard like in the height of summer, but uh, we'll let the goats come out and eat the weeds down. They're just very selective and they leave some things and We'll, we'll let him eat it throughout the spring and then, you know, probably here another month or so, 
will actually mow it just so there's no risk of like snakes or anything in tall grass. But especially when it starts getting warmer and like the dogs are spending most afternoons in the house when it's, when it's hot outside, we give the goats the backyard. <laughs> Nice jumping. You're like a baby goat too. So I started dinner before I came out. Maya went in to finish it, so let's go see if he got it done. Well done, Maya. Buttered cod, Brussels sprouts, potatoes. Yum. <laughs> it's so tasty. That smells good, huh, Tobe? Mm -hmm. And that, my friends, is my cue to wrap this up. <laughs> it is time to set the table and eat dinner. You ready to say good goodbye? Yes. All right. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. We bless, we bless you. you. Until, Until next time. time.